All right, guys, welcome to On Your or not On Your Left. <laughs> a walk in my shoes. Uh, I'm your host, Daniel Reyes, and today we have a really special guest. Uh, great, good friend of mine. His name is Tom Backus. He's a locomotive engineer. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for letting us uh, take a walk in your shoes. How are you? Yes. I'm doing good, oh, Daniel. Man. Thanks it's for having me. Good to have you. It's always good to see you. Um, so, um, yes, a locomotive engineer. Um, give us an overview of what is it and what did you do? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, I worked on the railroad, um, and the locomotive engineer's job is to drive the train. Um, so, we operated the trains along the rails, uh, interpreting signals. Our, the main function of the job is to ensure the safe operation, the efficient and on-time operation of the trains to make sure passengers get there safely. A lot of responsibility, uh, but it's a very awesome, rewarding Awesome, awesome. And how, how is training? Like, how did you hear about the job? How did you get the job? So, that's a good question. I stumbled on the job <laughs> by accident. Um, I, was living, <laughs> I did. I, I, was, I was living in Wilmington, Delaware. I was working in the airline industry. I worked at, uh, for U.S. Air okay. in Philadelphia. And it was my birthday, and my girlfriend took me to New York for the weekend uh, to go listen to some music. And we took the train. And the air, at the time, the airline industry was, you know, in a, in a bad way. It was after 9-11. And when we took the train, I thought, man, this is really cool. I, I could see myself doing this. So I started doing some research and finding out, you know, how to get my foot in the door. It's very competitive, but uh, I got my foot in the door and uh, I started at an entry level job and then went into the engineering program. It's very competitive. You know, there's a lot of people that want to get into that, but you have to, you have to have good attendance. You have to have a good work record. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's highly competitive. So that's how I got in it. And uh, it was great. I made it through. It's very rigorous, very demanding hardest thing I've ever done. So how was the process rewarding. um to become an engineer? Um like the training, how many years did it take you to be where you were? Another good question. So um the the classroom training, once you get accepted into the program, the classroom training is anywhere from ten to twelve weeks based on the um area of the country that you're gonna be operating. So for me I Operated between Washington and New York. So the training was 10 weeks of classroom. And then after we got out of class, the next step was to qualify on the territory that you operate in. And that, that would be, to put it in perspective for you guys out there, like if you were to drive from Columbus to Cleveland, you'd have to tell me every exit, exit number, every traffic light, every street <laughs> sign, every direction. So I have to test between Washington and New York. And then you have to operate the train in accordance to the, the rules, you know, and the speeds on the railroad. So very rigorous. Two years. That, that's oh, that really? course. Of. So basically from start, it's about a three-year process. Three-year process. So is there like a test and if you, are you able to retake it if you fail? Or it... So, yeah. So as far as the testing, the, the 10 weeks of class, there's a lot of testing that goes on. You have... Um, there's, there's three stages. You have an air brake exam, you have a mechanical exam, and then your final exam, which encompasses both. At any point during your training, if you fall below the standard, which at that time I want to say was like 85%, and that's, that's been several years, so, you know, don't go <laughs> to that. But it, it's a very high standard. So if you, if you fail one of those tests or if you drop below the average, you're dismissed from the program. Really? And once you get dismissed, you can never come back. And the reason for that is, is because of liability. Let's say if you failed out of a portion of the program and then you appealed it and, and they let you back in, okay? And then so you get through the program. But a couple years later, you go out and you wreck a train and you kill yeah. 100 people. The first thing they're going to do is look at your training records and they're going to come back and say, wait a second. This guy failed out. Why did you put him back in the program? So for liability, you only get one chance. Wow. So, you know, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, and, and I even, after I became an engineer, I was also an instructor at our training center. So I, I kind of, you know, was handed the baton oh, to awesome. the next generations of engineers. Yeah, so, you know, as unfortunate as it is, some people... They fail out, and that, that was their one shot. They don't get another. So how, how was, would their reaction be? Or like, like I'm, I bet there were some that failed, and you were like, I'm sorry, but. 
Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, Daniel, is it's it's one of those jobs that not everybody is, is cut out for it, okay? And as, as the guy that's teaching you how to do it, I have to think, do I want you operating a, a train with my family? Good. And if you're not... Uh, if you're not 100%, I'm not going to sign my name to your certification card. So a lot of times people took it pretty hard, you know, and I, I remember one guy in particular, he was, um, he came in from the West Coast, he was working out of Los Angeles, I believe, and he didn't make it through the class, but he was struggling, and I was trying to tutor him. I spent a lot of time with this guy, you know, during the program, and ultimately it, it falls on his shoulders, you know, you can't want more from someone than they want for themselves. So I yeah. can't do it all for him. He ended up failing out, and it was it was an ugly thing because, you know, here I am. I was really trying to help this guy above and beyond, and then he tried throwing me under the bus saying he didn't get the attention oh, that he needed. Man. He got a birdie. <laughs> you know, they were us with, with warriors, and it's like, you know, you're training That's right. for itself. So it's, yeah, you got to, what I would tell the guys when they came in to class is I would say, look, this is 10 weeks long, and, and no matter what you've done in the past, you've got a, a new opportunity here. Don't screw it up. There's going to be times when you need to blow off some steam, and you want to go out to the bars, you want to go to the clubs, you want to party, and you have to go uh, past that. you gotta, you got to let it go because there's so much riding on this. You know, and I would even draw it out on the board you know, and say, look, this is what you'll make in your career here on the railroad based on what your, your former career was. And, you know, over the, the lifetime of, you know, if you're 25 years old, you're going to work till you're 65, right? That's 35 years, <laughs> if I do the math right. So, you know, 35 years is a long time. And these guys, it, the number is in the millions of dollars yeah. that you're sacrificing to go out and blow it oh, on a night God. party. So, you know, that's that was the point that I would try and drive home with these guys. Is don't blow it, man. You know, like, just knuckle down, get through this. And, and then you have all the time you want, but pass the exam, do what you have to do, and, and get this career because it's, it's very rewarding and financially. Financially, he said. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, man. So, as far as like days off, uh, holidays, we able to off or that work. Yeah, everything's seniority based. We're in the union. It's it's the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen. It's a very strong union through the Teamsters, um, and everything is seniority based. So as a new engineer, you can plan on working nights and weekends and holidays and birthdays and anniversaries, and it's it makes it difficult on your home life, especially if you have, you know, a spouse that is, is not <laughs> understanding. Uh, yeah. A lot of, lot of divorces on the railroad, a lot of, lot of you know, bad things in people's relationships. But as you progress in your career and you build seniority, you can get better days off and better shifts. And, you know, it's it's just one of those things you pay your dues and you move up yeah. the ladder. Yeah, just, it's, you're right. You know, just like any other job. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah you got to start at the bottom. If you come on the railroad and think that you're going to have weekends and holidays off, <laughs> this isn't for you. Oh, right? man. All right, G. <laughs> <laughs> but the trade-off is the trade-off is, is you're gonna make a lot of money. It's it's a very high-paying job. But the reason for that is because it's very demanding. You know, this is um, it, it's very dangerous work. You know, when you're moving a big piece of metal at 150 miles an hour with 400 people on it, you better you better have your game so, on, man. So Tom, yeah. give us a, a a typical day. So first, uh, you're going to work. What? Give us a, a rundown. Sure. First thing you do is you buy some donuts and get a big pot, right? You're gonna need, um, but we, we go into work, you know, and uh, you have a sign-up time. Your start time is, is usually about 40 minutes before your train is scheduled to leave. So if, if my train's leaving at 7.30 in the morning, I would be there at 10 minutes till 7, meet with the rest of the crew, um, which is typically uh, one engineer, a conductor and an assistant conductor, and then there would be train attendants on like the cafe car um, and sleeper attendants if the car has sleepers. But for as far as the crew briefing, it's the engineer, conductor, and assistant conductor. And you go over um, any pertinent information for the trip that day, speed restrictions, any uh, maintenance on the railroad, we discuss all that. Um, 
once you're done with the job briefing, you go get another <laughs> cup of coffee at Dunkin'. And then um, you head out to your train. You want to inspect the train to make sure that, you know, the brakes uh, on the train are released and, you know, the thing's yes. not going to roll away on you. You're checking the safety devices, making sure that the brakes work and headlights work. Um, excuse me, the horns we don't really test in the terminal because, you know, they're very loud. But uh, once it's departure time, all the passengers are loaded up and you're sitting up in the cab of the locomotive. You knock the brakes off and you start to throttle up and you move out of the station uh, based off of the speed uh, that's allowed in that area. It's just like on the highway. You know, you got 45 yes. mile an hour speed restrictions and then they let you up to 70. It's the same on a train. Except trains do not stop on a dime. They don't slow down on a dime. So really, you have to plan ahead. And especially if you're doing like 135 yeah. miles an hour, you know, you plan way in advance to, to get down to speed. But um, typically, you know, like going north out of D.C., we would stop. And uh, there's a little station called New Carrollton. We'd stop at the Baltimore Airport, Baltimore, Wilmington, Delaware, Philadelphia, Newark, New, 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 New yeah. Jersey. Um, sometimes Metro Park in that area, and then you go right into uh, Penn wow. Station, New York. Once we get up to New York, yeah, you'd have like three or four hours of downtime. You're uh -huh. still getting paid, right? You're still on the clock. You're, you're just, they've got a crew room where you can go and sleep. Um, you can go, uh, they give you a gym membership. There's a local gym there, so a lot of guys would go and work <laughs> out. Um, and then you come back and start it all over for your trip back. You'd have a crew briefing with your crew. You might, <clears throat> excuse me, you might uh -huh. have a different crew. But, uh, you know, you get back and then you, you head south back to D.C. And, uh, yeah. you know, well, same thing. Make, you know, that is so stuff. awesome. That, that just brings up, like, so many questions. Like, um, so <laughs> do you get food while you're um, driving? Do you Is there, like, a button, a call button or something? Hey, you know, can I have some more Dunkin' Donuts? Or... <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Like... So a lot of times, um, you know, we like coming out of New York, we would we would take breakfast with us up on the engine because we really don't have access to okay. the rest of the train. We're kind of isolated up there. So um, normally the conductors would bring us coffee. You know, they'd get on the radio and say, hey, do you want coffee at the next stop? And then we'd okay. get out and meet them on the platform. But as far as lunch being provided, no. Um, like up in New York, there's so many good restaurants. So we would go and get like a sub yeah. or, you know, a burrito or something and eat it, you know. But right about Philadelphia is a good place you know, to bust out dinner. Um, however, I tell you what's cool is sometimes, you know, like on the Acellas, the high-speed trains with the first class, they would have meals on there, and the passengers wouldn't show up. So uh -huh. we, would, we would get the meals off of that. The other cool thing that people don't think about is we would, we would transport really? professional sports teams. And that cool, yeah, because you have like, uh -huh. the Washington teams, you have Baltimore, then you have Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. So a lot of those, the baseball and football hockey teams travel by train, and it's a truck. Wow, I had never that. thought about that. So, yeah, so a lot of good <laughs> poker games went on with some of those athletes. But now I'm isolated from all that. I was up making sure that they were safe and, and getting to where they needed to go. But they would always send food up. Yeah. They always so would there those be, like, uh, I don't know, business class and a coach? And is that – Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. The Acellas, um, you know, have really nice first class, and they're not quite as nice <laughs> as what Delta Airlines does in their first. But business class is very nice. You know, you get a bigger seat, a little more room to stretch out, free drinks in the cafe car, and then coach is like being <laughs> on a cattle car. You know, you don't know what you're gonna get. It's it's like a notch above taking the bus. So but um, you know, it's. It's still traveling by train is pretty cool. So it's 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 still comfortable. It's very <laughs> That's surprising. awesome. Well, guys, you guys are watching A Walk in My Shoes with Tom Backus. Uh, he's a locomotive engineer, a retiree. Um, Tom, thanks again for letting us walk in your shoes. Um, so, yeah, how long is the trip? You know, I don't know from D.C. You said to Boston or New York. Um, and did you ever have any like problems? Um, I don't know, as far as, like, the train or people or, you know, those people that try to beat uh, the train. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, all the time, Daniel. So, you know, like, my run was from Washington to New York, and then we'd do a crew change. I would get off the train, 
another crew would come on and we'd have a job briefing right on the platform. I'd tell them how the train's operating, any problems with the brakes, that way they know about it. Um, but yeah, on the railroad, you know, you're going to encounter all kinds of stuff. We've had, you know, uh, mechanical problems. Um, flooding has been an issue. You know, I've seen wow. water where it's above the rail um, and you can't even see the rails. So you have to go really slow in that instance. Um, yeah, and as far as like, you know, irregular occurrences, I could probably <laughs> you should. Write a book about that, you know, a lot of trespassers um, and anybody that is on railroad property is really? considered a trespasser. You're not a pedestrian or anything else because that you're trespassing where you really? should Really? So, we've had this, yeah. I, um, I remember one time I was leaving Wilmington, Delaware, and headed down to D.C., and I was just, there's a little town south there called Newark, <laughs> well, they call it Newark, which makes no sense to me. But um, there was a Chrysler plant over to the, the east side of the railroad tracks, and we're coming out of a 90-mile-an-hour speed restriction, and we can accelerate up to 125 in there. And... I had just gotten out of this curve and I throttled up and the train's accelerating and I see this dog running across the tracks and yeah. I'm like, oh no, man, I don't want to hit this dog. But we can't stop for dogs, right? Oh, we man. Hit animals all the time. But out of the corner of my eye, I oh, see a guy no. chasing the dog and I'm like, oh, now yes. I set up in my seat, right? And the guy, like, I start laying on the horn and, you know, like, Oh, train yes. horns are super loud, right? <laughs> so I'm like hanging from the air horn. This guy running. And I thought, man, I'm going to hit this dude. And uh, I actually, I thought I hit him. I didn't hear the thump. But um, I looked in my mirror and I could oh. see the guy tumbling in the, the, the bushes. So oh, I just barely man. missed it. But that's, that's one of the things that we do train for is, is unfortunately trespasser strikes. You know, we have to. And that can get in your head, man. That's that's not a good thing to see, you know, somebody stand in front of your train. But um, that's one of the things that we train for. Um, we've had, um, when I worked in West Virginia, we had people trying to yes. beat the, the Yes, we've seen the videos. You guys know how to <laughs> so, yeah, people, they, they beat the yeah. train. Uh, you know, I've. I've never hit any hit anybody, but I've I've come awfully close, and I had to respond to a lot of those incidents. So that's that's the unfortunate, wow, ugly part. Wow, of that that's amazing. That is. So do you get people who, who hop on like you know those people that just jump on the plane on the side or I don't know or, like do you call the cop? <laughs> they better right. jump on the side. Oh. Of the plane, <laughs> Actually, you know what? Honestly, we, we have had people do that before. Um, I had a guy um, one time in Charleston, West Virginia, jump in between the cars. He got on the ladder and held on between Charleston and Huntington, and it was at night, oh, and man. it was in the wintertime. And down there, we're only doing speeds of, like, they're slower. It's only, like, 79 miles an hour in that territory. So, But you can imagine, oh, yeah. you know, how cold this dude was. And he had literally had to hold on to uh. his life. But we had him arrested. We, and we didn't know that he was on the train. Yes. We had no idea until we got into Huntington, and the guy, like, you know, fell down. After we'd stopped the train, he was so cold and frozen. And we, we called the police, you know, and, and that's, that's a big no-no. But you know, <laughs> the guy got a free ride. <laughs> jail uh, but he's 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 lucky yeah. that he didn't kill himself that you know because that's that's very you can lose a finger or a, a hand an arm oh, you get I cut bet. in half like that so, man that yeah, is amazing. serious business so you said that that's trespassing yeah. so like people who are taking pictures on the is that allowed or is that not you know how they uh you get for take you a picture uh, you know with the track behind you that yeah oh man <laughs> and the word that comes into play is is in the courts you know because if you're let's say unfortunately let's say a train comes by and and smacks somebody and you know yes lays them out they're dead right so and obviously you know the family is upset everybody always worries about all oh, that guy's poor family nobody ever thinks about yeah. the poor engineer that just saw that but you know Typically, their family is going to take the engineer to court, not only the railroad, but the engineer. And, you know, that's yeah. where they shouldn't have been. You know, had they not been 
trespassing, they wouldn't have gotten hit by the train. So anytime you see railroad tracks, that, that portion of the tracks and the area around it is railroad property. And if you look, you'll see signs that says no, no trespassing. So if you're out there and oh, you get man, it, man, that's a big deal. I, I would, never thought about that because like behind our building, there yeah. is um, some train tracks and I'm like, you know, that'd be awesome to take some pictures or get some videos. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, but, you know what? Yes. As long as you do it from a safe distance, you know. Hey, I'll tell you, when I was a kid, yes. I put pennies on the railroad tracks and you tar picks, you know. If you, you believe this, the size of a penny, you can actually feel when you're operating the train. Are you serious? You can feel it when you run over it. Yeah, and, you know, if you, if you think about this, man, speaking of coins, so the amount of the wheel that touches the rail is only the size of a dime so think about that that's all that's making contact you don't have it's not like a tire yes. where you know you got a lot of contact there's wow. only the size of a dime so if you try and stop that thing you're going to need a lot of distance and same thing with getting it moving that's a lot of weight you're talking about you know hundreds of thousands wow. of tons to get moving that, at that is speed. unbelievable so, so has there ever been like any branches or like any debris uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah so I, man i i've um, hit you know like storms you'll you'll get a big storm that, that will come through i remember one time we had to stop the train in west virginia we hit a bunch of trees um you know it knocks the air loose on the the train and the the brakes are operated by air oh, so if you don't have any air you don't have any brakes <laughs> so, but you know, what's cool about the braking system on a train is it works opposite. So you would think that when you apply the brake that it's going to apply air yes. to push the brake pads onto the wheel, right? But if the the engineer became incapacitated, you'd have a runaway, a runaway train. So the way the brakes on the train work is the air is pushing the brake pads away from the wheel. And so when I apply the brake, it releases the air yes, to yes. apply. Does that make sense? So if you ever lost air pressure, like if a hose became busted or it breaks the continuity of the airline, then the train is going to apply the brakes itself. <laughs> George Westinghouse, look him up. He's the one that invented it. That is unbelievable. Wow. So like during the snowstorms, yeah. is there like a speed you, you have to go to or, or do you cancel? Uh... You keep right on rolling, man. You know, back earlier when I first started talking, I was telling you about knowing your, your physical characteristics of the railroad, like the, the every exit, every exit number, every, you know, on the railroad, we have to know every signal, every siding, every single mile post. You know, we don't call them mile markers, they're mile posts, where everything is. So when it's, you're operating in fog, or when it's raining sideways or snowing, you still know where you're at, and you know where to put the brake on. Um, the funny thing about operating a train in the snow is I like earlier, uh -huh. I told you about the water getting above the rail. Sometimes after a big snow, if you're the first train out, nobody's run over the railroad yet, and you can't see the rail either. So it's an eerie feeling, but it's very quiet. Like it, the, the snow deadens the sound of the train. So it's, it's, it's really an oh. eerie feeling when you can't see the rail. When you're used to seeing the rail, yeah. all of a sudden it's not there. Oh, so do you, wow. do you have binoculars like to see it ahead? No, you just... No. <laughs> no, the only things that we would use the binoculars for is the Uh No, no. That's, a that's a wrong episode. show. <laughs> Man, that. Okay, this is this is it. yes, yeah, no, yeah, you did. Sorry, so let's go back to. Um, let's go back and where did you grow up? Um, you know, where are you from? Family and. Uh. Yeah, so I grew up in Westerville, oh, uh, okay. right here in the Columbus area, um, Ohio. Oh, State. H? Um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I-O, baby. Um, I worked when I was in college. Well, let me back up. When I was in high school, I got my wow, pilot Wow, that's I learned awesome. How to fly before I could learn so you were not fly. only a ground pilot, but you were yeah, so I, an air pilot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Matter of fact, if you look out, I don't know if you can see uh, out here behind me. Oh, yeah, we could see here. them. <laughs> Man, that's amazing. Yeah, when I was a kid, I learned how to fly. And then after college, I um, 
I worked for the airlines in college, and then I moved out to Los Angeles. Worked out there, um, came back here. I've, I've worked in a couple different stations in the airline industry. Um, but I've always, transportation's always been a love of mine, you know, whether it's uh, yes. by air or by rail. And, uh, you know, I bounced around with the airlines. Like I said, I was in D.C., I was in um, Charlotte, North Carolina, I was in Philadelphia, Lansing, Michigan, Los oh, Angeles. Wow. I've been around. But when I was in Philly is when I, I discovered the railroad. So that's that's what led me to the railroad. And, uh, you know, it's it's an awesome job. Man. It's an awesome career. It really is. Yeah. Is that one of the perks to go on the train? Like if you want to travel? Yes. Absolutely. That's you get free travel benefits, you and your immediate family. Um, you know, when I when I was working in the D.C. area, a lot of times, you know, for the holidays, we go to New York for the day. Um, just take a train up to New York. It drops you off uh -huh. that Midtown Manhattan. Go down to Rockefeller Center. And uh, wow, you know, New York's just a cool place to visit. It's fun to go and visit. Oh, I bet. I, I, yeah. I've only been to the airport. I've never actually been. Can you believe that? I know. Horrible. Uh Take you up there. Man. <laughs> I want to. I want to. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, where did, I'm sorry, you, where did, did you go to school? So, uh, here in Westerville, Westerville North. Okay. Play with that. I went to Ohio State. Um, and, right. you know, after that, I just kind of bounced around, followed a career with the, the airlines. And then uh, after 9 11, you know, the airlines kind of were not doing so well. Uh -huh. And I, wanted to make a career change. So that's how I ended up on the railroad. Wow. And they were still going, right? Were they? Oh, yeah. railroads, especially like, so for everybody that's here in Ohio, and I don't know if you have an audience that's beyond like Columbus, uh -huh. but I didn't really know anything about passenger rail because we didn't have it here in Columbus, but on the East Coast, it's huge. They're, that's how everybody gets to work. You know, you'll have people that work in New York City that live in Wilmington, Delaware. Really? What? I'll see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because they can commute to work. It's cheaper than trying to live in New York City. Yes, that is, you know, that so is true. They live in New Jersey and uh, Pennsylvania and Delaware, and they commute by train every day. So when you come rolling up on a platform to make a, a station stop, and there's a couple hundred people standing out there waiting to get on your train to go to work, you know, it's just like, wow. But that's oh, man. So fun. <laughs> yeah. People do it. That is so I wasn't used to that, you know. So when I got out there and saw that, you know, rails, railroad travel is, is huge, I was just blown away because yeah. we don't have that in Ohio. We don't have Amtrak here in Columbus. I mean, we've got it up in Toledo and Cincinnati. But, um, you know, it's not like it is on the East Coast where it's very common for people to go see a show, you know, go to New York, have dinner, go see a show, and take the late train home. I would love that. So. I would love uh... – yeah, just to, you know that experience to see what it is to be on a train. Now, is it loud when you're in there? Like, how's the sound? No. Do you feel no. the turbulence or, no. or like? Or... So, the, <laughs> the turbulence. I like that. It's not really. Sometimes you do like when you cross tracks, like if you're going to do it on a different route. But the, the rail up there is no longer, you know, the clank, yes. clank, 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 clank. It, it's continuous welded rail. So they have like these big long sections of rail that have been welded together and it's smooth and it's you know you'll be doing 135 miles an hour and you won't even know you're wow. moving and the actually you know i was telling you about wow. the acela trains they have they're built to go faster and they have um on the passenger cars they have a tilt system so it allows the train to go into the curves faster so like to offset centrifugal force the cars <laughs> will lean into the curve and the path don't even feel it i'd be a little nervous once we're like oh man <laughs> you don't even know it you're going so fast really? you don't even feel the curve now if you're engine the engine or yes. you know where the engineer sets you don't have a tilt system so you know you're getting slung to the side but <laughs> it's bet, pretty cool I bet. so you're able to walk up get up and if you're like in yeah oh yeah 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 you, you got you know and um, go up to the cafe car, grab a cup of coffee. Um, you can make phone calls. You can, you know, we've got Wi-Fi on the trains, you know, which was a big deal back then. Now, you know, all the airlines have Wi-Fi yeah. too. But, you know, that was one of the selling points. And, and realistically, you know, the track in particular is very competitive in that market with the airlines because, you know, between Washington and New York, you can just go hop on a train 
and, and be in midtown Manhattan. Whereas if you flew, you'd have to go through TSA. You'd have to, well, first you have to drive the airport park, yes. go through TSA. You'd have to wait the board. You take off. Once you land, you're let's, if you land at LaGuardia airport, New York, you're still looking at a, at a minimum 45 minute taxi cab ride to get in midtown. So the train drops you right off at 33rd and 7th, right in the middle of Midtown, and you walk up the steps or take the elevator, and you're right there, man. Wow. So pretty cool. That is. This sounds amazing. This is like, yeah. man, I, sh- I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I t- did the same thing when I got on the railroad. You know, I got on it late. It's a great career, and if anybody's looking for a, you know, a career, if they're wondering about what they should do, I would strongly suggest looking into the railroads, even – the freight railroads you know like here in columbus we have norfolk southern and csx and um same benefits you know it's great pay Uh, but you know to get the great pay comes great responsibility oh yeah um but yeah but it's you know the benefits are second to none um there's a there's there's some sacrifice you know like you can't like drugs and alcohol are a big no-no on the railroad so if, if you know, first of all, you got to come in clean. And if you ever come up hot, you're done. So that's, you know, the oh, trade off is, is do I want, do I want to party and, and make, you know, yes. this much? <laughs> or do I want to clean and yes. make <laughs> this, much? this much? You know, so that's, that's a sacrifice I yeah. made. I mean, I, I like to go out and have fun, but if I get hit with a DUI, I lose, not only do I lose my driver's license, but I lose my engineer's license as well. Wow. And that's not worth risking because I worked too hard to get it. Um, yeah. Oh, I bet. And, yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, that's that's one of the sacrifices. So you have to, it's a big boy job, yes. big boy slash big girl <laughs> job. And you have to, make, you have to make those types of decisions, yes. you know, but that's the, and the pay. Yeah, that's awesome. So is, are these trains, is there any that have like a two, two level or is it just the one? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's some that are you have dome cars where the top is all glass, so and they use those predominantly out west. So if you're going through like the national parks, you can see, you know, the mountaintops and all that. Um, Some of them are sleeper cars where they have, um, you know, like little a sleeper car basically is like a bed and you know like a bathroom and stuff like that. On the long distance trains, people pay to have that. So yeah, there's an upstairs. There's. That is so awesome, man! You know what? I really—that's gonna be on my bucket list now. I want to try it, ride a train, first or business class. <laughs> but you let me know when you're ready, Hoss, and, and I'll set. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely will let you know. I'll definitely let you know. All right. All right. Well, we're gonna give it time for our audience. If they have any questions, um, this is a good time to just let yeah. us know. I'm gonna have them type it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have. Um, I'm going to just say some random questions. Even though I have been asking you random questions, these are like fun sure. um, fun questions. Um, this one. All right, cool. Uh, what is your favorite food to eat? Oh, man, you should know that, man. Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> now, you know what? I, I, um, I like to grill. I like to barbecue. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, so that's that's fun. Obviously, I like all kinds of food. Um, but, uh, yeah, cooking out on the grill is one of my favorites. Oh man. You know, we went to, um, like, you know, we get food at, uh, our steaks at Kroger or, you know, local, but I tried a, uh, a Pataskali meats, like fresh meat. Yeah. How, how the difference of taste and texture, it is just amazing. Like, oh man, like the steaks, it was so good. I was able to eat it like a burger. Yeah. You know? That's <laughs> awesome. Like, uh, Oh, man. Yes. You know what? And, and having a good steak like that, and even for the, the folks out in the audience, you know, you guys, um, you work hard, you play hard, and, and treat yourself, man. Every now and then, go get yourself a nice big old steak and celebrate you and and, and all that you've accomplished and all that you're going to accomplish. It's I, Life's short, man. We only get this much time on earth. Take time to enjoy a good steak. I like that. I like that. Okay, you can never stop smiling when <laughs> when I'm talking to Daniel Reyes. <laughs> look at look at that smile! Everybody, look at that guy smile. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. You just got an A plus. Yeah. Let's All right, go. thank you. <laughs> I like that. Who is your your favorite superhero? 
My favorite superhero. Yeah, favorite superhero. Oh, that's a good question. I like Captain yeah. America. Oh. <laughs> because that's my favorite superhero. Man. All right. Yeah, man. man. That's what I'm talking about, Tom. Man, this is. <laughs> that's how I roll up here. That's how I roll. <laughs> I like that. Uh, at the end of the rainbow, what is there? <laughs> You want the? <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it. Let's keep it clean. <laughs> That's a lot of gold, Daniel. Come on. <laughs> That's right. So some people said pea. Some people said pizza. You know, it was just pot of gold. Yes. Oh, that's what they say, right? I, I keep chasing that. I, uh, my wife and I were driving back from Omaha, Nebraska last weekend, and we saw a double rainbow in Davenport, Iowa. So that was pretty cool. It was wow. a big storm. Started to clear up, and the next thing I know, it's like a double rainbow. I kept chasing it, but never got to the end. I know. It seems like you can never get to the end. I've tried. <laughs> got to keep trying. <laughs> I really do try. But... It's, it's just like life, man. You know, you got to keep chasing it until you get it. <laughs> I like that. Uh, uh, your favorite dream vacation spot? Oh, man. Um, I really like going anywhere in Mexico. I, I like um, I like Cancun. Um, Cabo San Lucas is really cool. Yes. I, I just I used to live in Southern California, and we used to go down to um, you know just in, inside Mexico. We would we would go. Yeah. I'm trying uh, to place what's that place, place called um, Low Hole. Uh, Rose Ensenada. We go to Ensenada a lot. Okay. And, yes. Yeah, and just you know the people there are so friendly, and I love the food. I remember we used to yeah. get the corn on the stick down there off the oh, street. Oh man, yeah. that's the best. You know, just yeah. So I, I love going down into Mexico. Man, yeah, I love Mexico. That's, I'm telling you, you're just it's like you studied me. You know, I'm from Mexico, Captain America. I'm know. stalking you, dude. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I, I I think. <laughs> yeah, right. So, right. And um, has there ever that you just hit rock bottom as far as you know maybe this is not me uh the engineering maybe um you know because you said it's a sacrifice with family sacrifice being at home did you ever get that thought and how did you get out of it how did you just that is an excellent question and and yes we all go through that right we all get yeah. to the point to where it's like, what am i doing you know i'm not going to be able to finish this and the way i got through it is i and you guys will probably laugh, but this is the honest truth. I picked a guy in my class who w was kind of an idiot. Okay, we all <laughs> we all have that. Yes, we. But are. I, I tell myself, I am not going to let him make it, and I'm not. I, if if he can do this, then I can do it. I'm not going to let him beat me in this game. So, I used him as my mark, and I just kept telling myself, I, I'm going to. If this guy's going to make it, then I'm going to make it, and that was kind of my inspiration. Okay, so uh, yeah, did he make it? He made it. Yeah. He did make it. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, he he made it through. But you know, the, the bigger part of that is I made it through. Yeah, you know, I he was he was kind of a knucklehead. We all knew it, but he you know he he got through it, and uh, so that's you know, and I would pass that along to anybody that's out there listening. If, if you're if you're struggling or if you don't think you can get through it, number one, you can. OK, because the best way you learn is through failure. If Ooh. everybody met their goals all the time, there would be no appreciation. But that's good. You know, I like that. If you're struggling with something. Pick somebody that you can use as your mark and just say, you know what? If this person can do it, then I can do it, too. And it works. Man, that's awesome. I like that. So did you ever tell that knuckle guy, hey, you know what? I just want to let you know, thank you, because you, <laughs> you helped me. <laughs> I, I told him every day. Oh, really? <laughs> like, dude, if, you know what? I am not letting you get through this, and I'm not going to make it. So <laughs> I'm watching you. I'll crowd. watch you. That's, That's right. <laughs> and we all laughed about it, but it was the truth. That's funny. Oh, man, that's awesome. Tom, this has been great. Good information. For those that are uh, listening, man, this has just been, for me, has been a, just an eye-opening to a whole new place. You know, well, good, I, man. I love and, it. and you know what? I, I would offer this up, you know, for, for anybody that's tuned in. Um, if going forward, if, if you ever want uh, to have a discussion or if I can lend any advice or help anybody that's out there, um, Daniel has my yes. contact information and I would be 
honored to help guide you along or anything that I can do to help you out. So yeah. we, we all go through struggles, man. I've been through it. I, um, you know, your career, if, if our career went as we planned, everything would be great. Right. But you, you know, it never goes as you want it to. Yeah. And so sometimes you have to be open-minded. And when you think that things aren't working out, just wait a little bit and you'll find that they're going to course open for me that I never saw coming and so just enjoy the ride and be open-minded and, and don't ever stop learning you know don't yeah. ever stop I like that Tom you've been great uh again this is an awesome uh walk in your in the shoes uh we have a question well, from the Audi first, man, <laughs> and some other stuff too maybe right, <laughs> right. exactly <laughs> here's the question from the audience uh what is uh what is the entry level salary for an engineer and what is it compared to an experienced one? Excellent question. Okay. So as, as an entry level engineer, um, hourly, I think now you're starting out around $30 an hour. If you, if, but I don't like to figure it on hourly because there's a lot of overtime that, that's built into the schedule. Um, the guys that worked for me when I was managing my own crew base, they, all made right, right around one hundred and thirty thousand, um, and that's wow. that's good cabbage, you know, because that was. <laughs> but you know, there, like I said, there's some sacrifice because those guys weren't home every night. They would they would take a train out, and then they would have to spend a night or two before they could come back home, and they still get paid while they're away. So if if I end my trip and go to the hotel, uh -huh. the company's paying for the hotel. I'm getting a meal allowance. And then for every day that I stay away, they're paying me eight hours to be away. And then I get paid for the trip back. So there's a lot of overtime built into it. But I would think first year as an engineer, once you get fully qualified and promoted, you should make no less than 80, 85 starting <laughs> out. And, and, you know, the, and the cool thing about that is, is you don't need a college education, you know, you, but what you, you have to be, you know, when I, when I went through school, there was a couple guys in my class that were early 20s, you know, no college education, but they were smart and they were responsible. Wow. So make, you can make a point. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. All right. Here we go. Another question from the audience. Um, what is the difference between conductor and an engineer? Excellent question. So the engineer, which is what I, I did, I'm the guy that's at the controls of the, the, locomotive and the locomotive is is the big old engine that's at the front of the train so we're the ones moving the trains like a pilot for the airlines okay the conductor is actually the boss of the train they're the ones that have the final authority um but on a passenger train they're the ones back in the back collecting tickets making sure that order is maintained all the time on the freight railroads a conductor is still the boss of the train but they they ensure that all the paperwork is in order um, it's a, it's a very, conductor, uh, highly, um, responsible. There's a lot of responsibility being a conductor. There's a lot of responsibility being an engineer. The pay is a little less bank. And you know, the thing, there's a joke between conductors and engineers, uh -huh. you know, cause the conductors will say, well, I'm the boss of the train. Uh -huh. uh, I run, but the train doesn't move until the engineer knocks the brake off and throttles up. <laughs> So, well, Doctor thinks he's in charge. There's, we we're the ones controlling what's happening. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, yes, you're the boss. Whatever. <laughs> That's right. Now bring me some <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, what is the longest time you've been away from home due to work schedule? So, as an engineer, um, when I worked on the Northeast Corridor between Washington and New York, I was home every night. But, you know, there was a lot of commuting time involved in that. Um, when I was managing the crew base down in West Virginia, I still had to run the train. I was responsible for running. I was qualified to do it. Um, two nights. So typically, if I went out on a Sunday night or a Sunday morning, I would not get back until Wednesday night. So I would do a run, get there Sunday night. We would spend Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and then bring a train back Wednesday afternoon and get back on Wednesday night. <laughs> but now I'm gonna tell you a secret, okay? A lot of people, this is the insider secret. Okay, so all right. They say 
<laughs> That's right. So the guys would get into, they would arrive on Sunday night and they would keep a car at that location because if you're going to be there for three or four days, you want to be able to run around. So somebody would take a car over there and it'd be like a car that everybody could use. But a lot of times the crew would get hop in the car as soon as they arrived at the train station and drive back home, spend a couple of nights at home and then get up early Wednesday morning, drive to where they're originating and then bring the train back. So they're getting paid away from base, <laughs> but they're actually. <laughs> Yeah, I keep that. That was a, a, a helpful tint, uh, tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, here we go. Uh, a locomotive engineer. Um, what do you recommend to people wanting to get into becoming a local uh, motive engineer? Very good question. Um, so number one, um, you have to have a, a good background. You have to, and when I say background, I'm talking about work, you know, attendance. Um, you have to stay clean. One of the first things they're going to do when they, they offer you employment is a drug and alcohol test. And you're, you're subject to random drug and alcohol tests as you go through. But um, it's highly competitive. There's a lot of people that want, it, want that job because of the benefits and the pay. So, you know. But like I said, I would recommend just getting any any job on the railroad that you can. Just just the fact that you're on the railroad means that you're available for railroad retirement, which is better than Social Security. So get your foot in the door like I did. I took any job I could get. I got my foot in the door. And then at that point, you're an internal candidate instead of external. And yeah. they, they railroads like to hire from within. So if you get inside... And then you show up for your shift and you don't call out sick and you have a good work ethic and a good record and you keep yourself clean, you'll get accepted into the program. And uh, usually a natural progression is to become an assistant conductor and then a conductor and an engineer. That's the way it typically works for the freight railroads. But it's not uncommon. I, I was never a conductor. I got I got my nose uh, I got my foot in the door, and then I was able to keep my nose clean and get right into it. <laughs> but it's it's competitive. You you really you know stay clean and work yeah, hard. Of that's course, the best I can of tell course. You. So yeah, and that that applies everywhere. That's right. That's true. On um, whatever you want to do uh, in life, that's right. stay clean. Do it. I have a question. Last question. This is just me. We're the audience. Yeah. Are you? Do you get benefits as far as like, like when you go to Europe uh, on trains, or is it just uh, here in the U.S.? You know, like uh, I don't know if it calls it standby or, you know. So yeah, another good question. Um, that is um, typically professional courtesy. Okay. So if if I'm in Europe and I want to go take, you know, um, one of the European trains, uh -huh. then. Typically, what I would do is just show my ID and introduce myself to the conductor, or look for the engineer walking on the platform. Yeah, there is there's there's ways that you can go about it, you know, to where you can get a, a, a ticket at a discounted rate. But as an engineer, it's kind of an unspoken professional courtesy. Bring your credentials, show them to the crew, and they'll allow you on. Um, but you know, also we get discounts at hotels, um, rental cars, resorts. Um, wow. You know, That's just amazing. like. I, yeah, it's awesome. That is amazing. Man, Tom, thank you so much for letting us walk in your shoes. Uh, this has been amazing. Uh, it's been, hopefully, uh, for those uh, watching and listening, hopefully this is a wake-up call. Look, get your foot in it. <laughs> uh, up on <laughs> the right way, of course. <laughs> yeah, and you know what, too, Daniel, and, and I would say to, to you guys out there that are listening, be willing to relocate. This is one of those jobs that, you know, maybe it's, there's not going to be availability right in your backyard. You might have to, you know, go to Chillicothe or Pittsburgh or someplace like that. Be willing to relocate for this job because it is, it will change your life. Yeah. And oh, yeah. it will, it's hard work. It's demanding. It's very rewarding. But, you know, you can work right here in Columbus. There's, you know, Norfolk Southern has a yard on the west side. You know, ch check their website check CSX's website because they're always looking for all kinds of positions. But yeah. Get your foot in the door and you got it. That's awesome. 
Guys, this was Tom Backus. You've been watching A Walk in My Shoes. Tom, again, thank you so much for uh, taking time, part of your day, to being with us and letting us walk in your shoes, seeing things, uh, hearing things, and just the whole perks of engineer. Uh, thank you so much. Um, guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Um, yes.